The Hawker Siddeley Nimrod was one of Britain's last standoffs against the dominance of the US aviation industry. The aircraft failed to succeed in international markets as anticipated. Nonetheless, it prevented infiltration into the UK from the other side of the Atlantic for nearly 40 years. Today we're investigating the Nimrod, the aircraft that opposed both the USSR and the USA. The Nimrod is among the first Cold War's most iconic and successful maritime patrol aircraft or MPA. The Royal Air Force or RAF also operated its second version and Boeing's cunning marketing strategy unplugged the AEW variant which had been hanging on by a threat from the start. The final attempt to save it with the MR4 variant was heartbreaking too. The Nimrod story began in the early 1960s. In those years, Following an extensive study for the replacement of the piston-engined Aura Shackleton, the UK determined that converting an airliner to an MPA would be more cost-effective than developing a new one from scratch. Therefore, the Brits evaluated the Vanguard and VC-10 from Vickers, as well as the Comet and the Trident from Hawker Siddeley, now known as BAE Systems. The VC-10 and Trident were quickly eliminated because they were too big and expensive. The British military planners still viewed turboprop engines as overly complex and lacking the speed required for an on-call anti-submarine warfare or ASW and patrol missions. The only remaining option was the Comet, the world's first and most mature jet airliner which had been in service since 1952. The new MPA would be based on the 4C version of the aircraft, also used by the RAF. In May 1965, Hawker Siddeley received government approval to begin the design phase. At that time, the new aircraft was designated as HS-801 with the codename Sea Comet. In January 1966, London signed a contract with the company for the construction of two prototypes and 38 production models. To avoid redesigning the entire pressurized cabin and to reduce development time and costs, British engineers attached an extended unpressurized fairing to the Comet 4C's lower section which housed the radar antenna and cargo compartment. As a result of this modification, the new MPA would feature a figure 8 cross section and a mid wing design, in contrast to the original long wing airliner with its circular cross section. In April 1967, just 15 months after signing the contract, the first HS 801 prototype was rolled off the assembly line. On May 23rd, the aircraft made its maiden flight, but it was now called Nimrod MR 1. On June 28, 1968, the first production aircraft took to the air for the first time in complete combat configuration. On October 2, 1969, Hawker Siddeley delivered the first operational MPAs to No. 236 Operational Conversion Unit, an RAF unit responsible for training and retraining maritime patrol aviation pilots. Besides the fairing attached below, the Nimrod naturally had other differences compared to the Comet. To adapt the Rolls-Royce Spade turbofan engine, engineers at Hawker Siddeley partially redesigned the center section and enlarged the air intakes and exhausts. Furthermore, the Nimrod had one reinforced rib in each outer wing to carry anti-ship missiles. A searchlight was installed in the forward section of the right external fuel tank for night and low visibility search operations. Due to the aircraft's increased takeoff weight, both the main landing gear and its mounting points were reinforced. And of course, the engineers implemented a series of anti-corrosion measures on the airframe and engines. Based on the airliner, the Nimrod provided relatively comfortable accommodation, ensuring the crew remained highly functional during extended flights over the sea. Those who had previously flown Shackleton's described it as a flying Hilton. Its large wing area and the even distribution of the load ensured smooth flight even when flying with open hatches and through turbulent weather. The aircraft was easy to maneuver, particularly during ASW operations, completing a 180-degree turn in just 20 seconds with a radius of approximately 700 meters. The MPA could patrol at low altitude with only two engines running at a speed of 330 to 350 km per hour, similar to that of a piston-engined aircraft. This feature made it easier to track submarines, reduce fuel consumption and increase patrol endurance. Operating with only one engine, 
The Nimrod could fly with a weight of 68,000 kilograms at altitudes of up to 1,700 meters. Its 926 kilometers per hour maximum flight speed was highly effective for penetrating air defenses and striking surface ships. Its cargo compartment slash weapon bay measured 14.78 meters in length, 1.9 meters in width and 1.3 meters in height. It could hold up to 9 torpedoes, mines, depth charges or 6 additional fuel tanks mounted on the cradle mounted pods in the passenger cabin floor. The Nimrod MR1's typical crew was 12 people including a pilot, co-pilot and flight engineer on the flight deck, a routine navigator, tactical navigator, radio operator, radar operator, ESM med operator, two sonic systems operators and two observers slash store loaders in the pressurized cabin. It had a length of 38.63 meters, a wingspan of 35 meters and a height of 9.08 meters. Its wing area was 197 square meters. The aircraft's empty and maximum takeoff weights were 39,000 and 87,090 kilograms respectively. Four 54.1 kN Rolls-Royce RB16820 Spey Mark 250 turbofan provided a top speed of 926 km per hour. The Nimrod MR1 had a range of 9,265 km and a service ceiling of 12,800 meters, equivalent to 42,000 feet. It could carry up to 9,100 kg of ordnance on two wing pylons and within the internal bomb bay. Its armament included Mark 46 torpedoes, Mark 30 and Mark 44 depth charges, and the AS-12 No and AS-37 Machtel air-to-surface missiles. Although the IRF officially described it as a radar calibration aircraft since the end of the First Cold War, everyone knew that the Nimrod R1 was developed for SIGINT missions. This variant made its maiden flight on October 21, 1973. It was operated by a five-person flight crew and could accommodate a mission crew of 23 to 25 depending on the specific operation. The Nimrod R1 became operational on May 10, 1974. It was visually distinguished from the Nimrod MR1 by the absence of a magnetic anomaly detector boom. The Nimrod MR1's avionics, which were merely improved versions of those used on the Shackleton, were already outdated. Most of them were analog rather than digital, unlike the latest version of the Orion P3C. The Nimrod MR1 stood no chance of winning a tender against its US rival in the MPA acquisition programs of Australia and Canada. Consequently, in 1973, Hawker Siddeley launched the Nimrod upgrade program codenamed Phase 2, which was supported and funded by the British government. The project primarily focused on modernizing avionics. It also included a more powerful auxiliary power unit, modified air conditioning systems for the pressurized cabin, and cooling for the new equipment. The RAF officially reintroduced the newly converted variant, now called Nimrod MR2, into service on August 23, 1979. However, Canada chose the P3 based CP140 Aurora. Ottawa's decision also influenced Canberra, leading Australia to opt to continue with the Orion. Hawker Siddeley initially converted 32 aircraft to Phase 2 standards. However, in 1981, because several ASW ships were decommissioned, the Royal Air Force ordered three additional aircraft. During the Falklands War, four Nimrods were fitted with in-flight refueling systems in just three weeks. However, placing the refueling booms above the cockpit further worsened the MPA's already poor directional stability, making approaches to tankers extremely perilous. To remedy this issue, several design improvements were implemented. Following the Falklands War, the number of aircraft equipped with in-flight refueling systems was increased to 16. At the same time, the remaining MPAs underwent modifications to facilitate the installations of such systems on demand. Furthermore, the initial four Nimrod MR2s were equipped with one additional external hardpoint beneath the wings for air-to-air -air missiles, and their cargo bays were modified to accommodate the recently adopted Stingray lightweight ASW torpedo. They could also carry 454 kg high-explosive bombs and BL-755 cluster bombs. Another modification involved installing the AGM-84A Harpoon and AGM-65 Maverick missiles, which could be mounted either internally in the cargo bay or externally on underwing pylons. Later, all Nimrod MR2s gained the capability to use these weapons. 
The Phase 2 upgrade program was completed in early 1985. In the same year, six aircraft were equipped with the new Laurel EW-1017A SIGINT system. During Operation Desert Storm, Nimrod MR2s gained the capability to launch Sea Eagle anti-ship missiles and were fitted with towed decoys. In the late 1970s, the airborne early warning variant of the Nimrod entered fierce competition with its US rival E3 Sentry. The Nimrod AEW-3 would create about 7,000 jobs in the UK and ensure Britain's ongoing competitiveness in high-tech aviation and military electronic systems industries. 11 Nimrod MR1s would be converted to this version by 1984, which was nearly the same time frame as the expected E3A deliveries to NATO countries. In the early 1981, the Brits realized that to compete effectively with US companies, they should have started in 1970 as Boeing did, not in 1977. In December of that year, the US Air Force received the 27th of the 34 E3As ordered, while the third Nimrod AEW-3 prototype without targeting equipment just flew for the first time. The most challenging part of the program was developing electronic sensors, mission equipment and avionics. At one stage, the Brits considered equipping the Nimrod with the E2C systems, but they later abandoned this plan. The British public mainly backed the Nimrod AEW-3 because it was expected to generate new jobs. Therefore, Boeing offered offsets for British companies starting at 35% and increasing to 130% at the end. The company claimed that it would create approximately 40,000 jobs for the British aerospace industry. These figures were obviously false propaganda and would never be delivered, yet they were highly appealing to workers, business people, unions and politicians. But that wasn't all, as the E3 selling price was slashed to an incredibly low $65 million each. Interestingly, NATO countries paid $184 million each for their last aircraft, while Saudi Arabia paid $240 million per aircraft and France's selection of the E3 marked the end of the line. In December 1986, the UK ultimately chose the Sentry, leading to the cancellation of the Nimrod AEW program. Back in 1986, feasibility studies revealed that the Nimrod MR2 would soon require a midlife update program or be replaced. The UK initially considered the second option and declared its interest in Lockheed's P7A aircraft. However, when the USA cancelled this program in 1990, the first alternative shone out again. After the dissolution of the USSR, the project lost its priority. While further feasibility studies continued, two aircraft were lost in different accidents in 1995, causing some second thoughts about the program. Nevertheless, in July 1996, the British Ministry of Defense's Armaments Acquisition Committee recommended the government to proceed with Nimrod modernization and London later awarded BAE, the successor of Hawker Siddeley, a contract to upgrade 21 aircraft. The company would replace at least 60% of the airframe, almost all avionics and sensors, as well as engines. The new model, called Nimrod MRA4, made its maiden flight on August 26, 2004. However, the program faced severe delays, repeated cost overruns and financial cutbacks. In 2010, the RAF terminated the project, by which time it was £789 million over budget and over nine years late. During the Cod War, the Nimrod sometimes approached Icelandic fishing boats in the conflict zone to intimidate them by exposing their open weapon bay, which contained a full arsenal of depth charges and torpedoes. During the 1982 Falklands War, the RAF deployed four modified Nimrod MR2s to Ascension Island. They carried out their first combat mission on May 9. After takeoff, the MPAs headed toward the Trindade Island area, where they were refueled by victors. During the conflict, one Nimrod MR2 bent its refueling boom while refueling and was forced to return to base. One aircraft conducted a 19-hour 5-minute patrol on May 15, passing within 97 kilometers of the Argentine coast. Another MPA covered a total of 13,604 kilometers during the 9th of 20th and 21st of May. During the 1991 Gulf War, Nimrod MR2s guided attacks by Lynx helicopters and A6 intruder aircraft on naval targets 
and helped sink or damage 16 Iraqi patrol vessels. The Nimrod R1 participated in the Falklands War in 1982, the Gulf War in 1991, operations over the Balkans in 1992, the Afghanistan War in 2001, and the Iraq War in 2003. The Nimrod served the RAF well, but could not resist the US dominance in the high-tech maritime patrol and airborne early warning aircraft market. But still, it has managed to make a name for itself as a legend. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. And you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.